Good morning and welcome. What a beautiful day that we have to come and worship the Lord. And we are so glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us, please, we welcome you warmly and are glad you're with us. And remind everybody to sign the friendship pads or the attendance registers that are at the end of each pew so that we may record your attendance and greet each other by name at the end of the service. Um, there's lots of wonderful announcements in our bulletin. I want to highlight uh, several of them for you. Today is three cents a meal. Our cans are ready. Uh, the children and the youth will come around a little later with that during the offering. Saturday meals is this coming Saturday, and they still could use some help with, especially Saturday morning. We've got the evening pickup taken care of, but um, Saturday morning, what time, Mrs. Tricky? 8.30 to 9 at, at, at St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Um, if you can help deliver at 8.30 that mo Saturday morning, that is a wonderful ministry to the community. Uh, it's 8.30 at St. Joseph's Catholic Church. 6.30 if you want to come and get us prepped. I'll be there early with the bread. Y'all can come help. <laughs> Um, gallery Hop is this Friday. Or we are switching out uh, to a new display, and we're going to have an artist who will do printmaking if you'd like to come and try your hand. I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, next Sunday, coffee orders. So if you need your equal exchange fix of coffee, chocolate, tea, they have lots of great products, and it's all fair trade. Uh, a reminder, pig picking is two weeks from today, and that means that we won't have anything going on here that Sunday. So two weeks, and I know David Thomason probably could still use some help um, with organization for that. So, And I know you've seen in your bulletin the civility workshop is coming up at the end of August, and I encourage you to sign up for that. It should be a really good day of training, of learning to talk with each other, especially when we have issues that we disagree with. Um, and of course, again, welcome. Let us worship God.
As you're able, please stand for our call to worship. In every tiny seed or small bit of leavening yeast, the eternal realm of God waits to come forth. Like a hidden treasure or a precious pearl, the eternal realm of God is of extraordinary value. We look for God's kingdom come today. We hope for the kingdom and we desire God's rule. things work together for good for those who love God. Our love for God calls us to repent of the sin that has divided us from God. Here we make a new start. Let us pray the unison prayer of adoration and confession printed in the bulletin. O Lord our God, we confess that we do not reflect your glory. We devote ourselves to small things while you work on a greater purpose. We distract ourselves with petty designs while you surprise us with the coming kingdom. Forgive us, restore us, and reorder our lives by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may know your will and do your work to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Only the Lord can judge us fully, and now the Lord has heard our confession. Trusting in God's God, infinite mercy, we believe we have been forgiven.
do have victory through Christ, and we have peace because we are reconciled to God. Let us share that peace with one another. The peace of God be with you all. And also with you. Lord, your promises surround us. You are our shepherd, and there is nothing more we need. You restore our hope and strengthen our faith with a word. Open our ears and fill our hearts. Secure us in the name of Christ. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations.
to welcome Larry Gildersleeve, who will bring us the word this morning, and Matthew is off for a well-earned week of vacation. Let us stand as we're able for the reading of the Gospel. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This is the fourth time in the past two years that I've had this privilege. Each time I've discovered that the preparation time is taking longer and the length of the message is getting shorter. <laughs> but Kathleen tells me not to worry that I'm not risking disappointing anyone. This morning I want to offer perhaps a different way of looking at something that we all think about. And that's how to fulfill our calling as Christians to be of service to others. What I'm suggesting is simply this, that sometimes, not always, but sometimes, we lead instead of follow. That we go in search of opportunities to serve. In the words of Mother Teresa, don't wait for others. Do it alone, person to person. There will never be another like her, not even close, and that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just suggesting that at times we as individuals follow her words, choosing how, when, and where we choose to be of service to others, answering only to our heart and to our God. And I believe this comes together nicely in the 23rd chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 34th verse. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with a question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is love your neighbor as yourself. Growing up, I remember a book in a distinct blue and white cover on the bookshelf in our home. The title was Many a Good Crusade. It was the autobiography of one of America's leading educators from another time, the former dean of Barnard College at Columbia University. Last December, a professor at Southern Illinois University released a new scholarly work about her legacy, her crusades. I contacted him for an autographed copy. I read it, and I got to thinking, why can't each of us have our own crusades? Especially as it, if it moves us to act on our best intentions instead of waiting for others to inspire us, to lead us. 
Christianity and the Crusades are connected in an historical context, of course. In medieval times, it was retaking the Holy Land that inspired the Crusades. Today, a crusade is defined as leading or taking part in an organized campaign concerning a social, political, or religious issue. The Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s would certainly fit this definition, and the Reverend Martin Luther King said, one of life's most persistent questions is what am I doing for others? Also in the Christian context, for decades, there were the Billy Graham Crusades. If we chose to become individual crusaders, how would that work? Rather easily, I think. Our crusades can remain private, and they don't have to be shared with others. For guidance, we can look to the 12th chapter of Romans, verse 6, where it says, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Our crusades can be as comfortable as taking pen in hand and potentially more dangerous than we can imagine sitting here this morning. As a Christian crusader, we get to select our weapons of choice. And the choices don't have to be complicated. A checkbook can be a weapon. We can offer our, our professional expertise as pro bono counselors and mentors or simply be comforters to people in need. Our cars can be sources of much needed transportation for others. If we're physically able, we can volunteer to unload and put away food that's donated to the Salvation Army. I believe in the service of others, we can also regard ourselves as Christian soldiers. Although if we do, we have certain advantages over regular military. In our army of one, we won't have to march in formation. We won't have to wear a uniform or have required physical training. We won't even have to get up early in the morning if we don't want to. And selfishly, just think about what it does for us. For in the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, it is one of the beautiful compensations in life that no one can sincerely try to help another without helping themselves. Each of us will know if we're making as much of a difference as we believe we're being called upon to make. No one else is keeping score. Well, almost no one else. But all crusaders and Christian soldiers will know the truth in these words of John Ruskin. The highest reward for a person's toll is not what they get for it, but what they become by it. And here's something I believe to be very important. In the pursuit of our individual crusades, we shouldn't expect a person in need to seek us out. That is not their burden. Life has already heaped enough burdens on them. It is our burden, our obligation, to seek them out. However, I do believe that on occasions God will put a person in need directly in our path. One morning last December, I left room at the inn at about 5 in the morning and took an indirect route home, 
stopping at the 24-hour donut shop on the bypass. As I recall, it was just for coffee. <laughs> anyway, as I walked toward the entrance, I saw a woman sitting outside in the partial darkness. Seeing me, she remained silent. I spoke to her first. The details of her story, which I chose to believe, are too lengthy and too private to share. But here are two things I believe are worth sharing. I enabled her to get home to Franklin so she wouldn't lose her job that morning at a fast food restaurant there. And if it wasn't for room in the inn, I would have been home in bed. Helping her and reflecting back on the words of John Ruskin, my reward was being there that morning. I was meant to be there at that place at that time. A few months later, God did that to me again, putting someone in my path. I was invited to be a guest at a breakfast meeting of community leaders, and they do get up early in the morning. The guest speaker was a, the person that was placed in my path, informed the gathering that a church in Bowling Green had begun to house the offices of Phoenix Rising. This is an organization of women and men whose crusade it is to free those helplessly ensnared in human trafficking against their will in this city. My eyes were open to the reality that there is no moat around our castle. There is no drawbridge to protect all God's children. So I joined them in their crusade. If you were to word search many a good crusade, you'll understand why the book moved from my father's bookshelf to mine with his passing. The autobiography is of my cousin. I never met her. She died when I was in high school, and I wish I had. There's someone I wish all of you could have met. He's the Christian soldier I aspire to be. He's an African-American crusader God placed in my path in Seattle when we lived there, who became my best friend. Living paycheck to paycheck, Charles Upshaw held many jobs simultaneously, working with at-risk children, and he was also my personal trainer. He would only smile when I asked him which endeavor was the greater challenge, the children or me. He often couldn't afford to keep his car running, so he would either bike or run several miles from his home on the east side to downtown Seattle, to the Lord's Table, where they provided evening meal service for the homeless. And that was only one of his many selfless crusades. Except for my father, Charles has the kindest heart of any man I've ever known. After living 12 years in Seattle, not being with him is the only thing I truly miss. Hopefully each of you has a Charles in your life, a Christian soldier to admire and to emulate. With him in mind, this is what I know with certainty. Somewhere in our city, a veteran or an elderly person is being denied access to benefits to which they are entitled but don't know how to access. A person in need of critical medical treatment or someone with a mental illness has no means of transportation to a facility. An abused woman who needs protection or shelter for her children and herself. Somewhere in our city, a child is hungry. 
times in my life when I'm most humble or when I'm in prayer. The place where I'm most humble is when I'm standing right here. I felt the Lord called me to bring this conversation to you this morning. The idea of personal crusaders stirring our hearts and our minds and our bodies to action in the service of others. Metaphors work for me. Nothing would please me more than if the one involving crusades will begin working for just one other person after this morning. And thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, our prayer is that you will move each of us in a special way so that we may be inspired to continue our service to others. We are accepting that it may be your will for others to lead us or for us to be the ones to lead. We pray that our hearts and minds will be open to the recognition that from time to time you may place in our path those in need of our unique ability to serve those in need. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to call us to serve others because we know that it will lead to a purposeful life, not an accidental one. We pray for those with us and those apart from us. We pray in gratitude for the musical gifts of our choir, the leadership of Dr. Pope, and the inspired hands of Tom Moody. Our worship experience is so enriched by them. We pray for Anne and Matthew Covington and for all those in volunteer church leadership. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Our affirmation of faith is the Apostles' Creed is printed in the bulletin. Let us stand and affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, who is Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended from heaven third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit so our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love. You made all things in your wisdom, and in your love you save us. We pray for creation, overthrow evil, right what is wrong, feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice, so all your children may freely enjoy the earth you have made and joyfully sing your praises. We pray for the church. You have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, breaking bread together, proclaiming the good news to the world so that all may believe you are loved and turn to your ways and live in the light of your truth. We pray for peace. You sent us the Savior, Christ Jesus, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us, send peace on earth, speed the day when wars will end, and the whole world accepts your rule. We pray for enemies. We cannot love you unless we also love our neighbors. Remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people so that your children may be reconciled and live together in your peace. We pray for the leaders of all countries that with goodwill and justice they may break down barriers and draw together in one new world in peace. We pray for the sick. 
Today we lift up Mayetta Hines, recovering in the hospital, Margaret Pounds in Christian Health Center, and Ann Husky, moving back to her room. Cheer them by your word and bring us bring healing as a sign of your grace. Hear us as we pray for those who sorrow. Be with them, that they may be sure that nothing will separate them from your love. We pray for friends and family, and so that no one here leaves without prayer, we pray for those near us, on our right and our left. Let us do that now. Bless us and those we love, our friends and families, that we may draw close to you and draw closer to each other. Mighty God, whose word we trust, whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our requests and further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together with boldness, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the children and the youth to come forward at this time for a special time for children as we prepare for our three cents a meal and our offering. And I give each one of you this. And what is that? A penny. And how much is a penny worth? One cent. What can we do with just one penny? Not a lot. That's right. Not a lot. <laughs> but you know what? When we put... Lots of pennies together, what happens? What happens? Get more money, that's right. So every three cents that we give, we try to give three cents for every meal. So how many cents is that a day if you eat three meals? Nine cents a day. doesn't sound like a lot. In fact, for each individual person for, a, for three months, because we collect this in worship like this, Every three months on the fifth Sunday, it's about once a quarter. It works out very nicely. It works out to just $8.10. And that's not a lot, but you know what? If everybody gives that much, then how much money do we have? Lots. I'm not real good at math, but $8.10 times as many people here would be a lot of money. Now, do you know what our three cents a meal goes for? We have two things. What, Nate? Yeah, two cents out of every three goes to the Presbyterian Hunger Program. And then the one cent goes to the food pantry. That's right, our food pantry. And I can tell you, we've seen a lot of people coming in for food recently. And we're also grateful for those that have fresh produce that bring. And we are able to give them some fresh stuff as well. So one penny out of every three that we give goes to our food pantry. And the two cents goes on to the... Presbyterian Hunger Program, which helps to address the cause of hunger, not only in this country, but around the world, to help people not be hungry. So our three cents adds up a lot very quickly, and I am grateful for you to help with this. And so we're going to start this off. Claire, would you just drop this all into one of those cans, because we like that noise. Oops. There, get that. Just drop it in a can. That's right. So I'm going to ask each of you to take a can and wait right here. And our ushers will come forward at the time for offering, and you will follow along behind. And if you have, they will pass the cans for you to put your offerings in. And we are grateful for everything that we get because, again, a little bit adds up to a lot. And we are able to help the hunger, hungry people here in Bowling Green. So let us 
remember that all that we have comes from God, and let us return a portion of that, because God takes that and multiplies that. Let us bring our tithes and offerings to God. Gracious God, generous God, thank you for these gifts, these tithes, these offerings, our gifts to three cents a meal. We know that you will multiply these gifts to do good in this world and that we can make this one of our crusades. Bless these gifts, bless us. In Jesus' name, amen.
are loved. God be with you, bless you, and keep you this week. And share that blessing with all that you meet. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.